am I on? All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, hello. Oh, I guess I'm not, I'm not even mic'd. Interesting. OK, I guess that's fine. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, spring quarter. And welcome to CS107. Um, hopefully, you're all uh, super excited to be here. Um, it's going to be a, there we go, uh, an, exciting, uh, an exciting quarter of, uh, of just sort of uh, good times. So um, let, me, uh, let me get started. Oh, let's sit down and uh, follow this. So we'll, uh, we'll do the normal kind of uh, uh, first day things today. Um, I want to, so the outline for today is going to be that um, I'll start by giving you just a quick overview of, uh, you know, what, uh, who we are and what we're doing here, um, kind of the usual uh, first day announcements. Uh, there is a, a handout uh, that hopefully all of you got that's in the back um, with kind of the brief overview of the policies and kind of things like that. Um, I'll tell you where to get all of the, the details uh, in a moment. And um, so after going over kind of the, the logistics and the, the basic kind of policies and what we're hoping to do here, um, I hope to spend most of today's lecture just sort of talking to you about how awesome 107 is and why we're all here and what we're going to try to accomplish um, throughout the quarter. So uh, yeah. All right, so let me start off by just kind of giving you a brief introduction uh, to uh, who we are, uh, your core staff. Um, we have two instructors this quarter, uh, which is very exciting. Um, Julie Zlensky, who's sitting over there, um, has basically uh, sort of created and run this class for the last uh, many years, I guess, um, and has, is certainly an expert in all things that are uh, R107. So um, it's going to be great to have her sort of you know, uh, helping us out and keeping us on track when I inevitably uh, get sidetracked or something. Um, my name is Michael Chang. I am a uh, lecturer here with the CS department. Um, and uh, so I'm, I've, uh, I've worked with CS 107 for a little while now, kind of working on the tools and the sort of back end stuff. And so I'm excited to uh, finally get to, uh, to teach it and sort of you know, uh, help you guys through um, what's hopefully going to be a, an awesome, an awesome class. Um, I do want to make a note before we continue uh, that just just so that we're all kind of on the same page. Um, that so I am visually impaired. Um, what that means is that if you uh, you know have a question or whatever, and you sort of sit there and raise your hand and like wait to be called on, it's sort of not going to work. Um, like, you know, I'm not ignoring you. I'm not, you know, just trying to like move on here. It's, I, I really just can't see your hand up. So if you have any questions, if you have, um, you know, if something is confusing or if uh, certainly if uh, something weird happens with, uh, with what you're seeing that, that I don't catch, um, just speak up. You know, I'll try to pause uh, whenever I can to sort of get, you know, questions and, and anything, but if anything kind of happens and you need to get my attention, um, totally feel free to just you know interrupt me as I'm going. Um, so in addition to the uh, to uh, us, Julie and me, we also have um, 16 awesome TAs uh, whose, list, whose names are are there. Um, you will certainly get to know the TAs um, throughout this quarter. They'll be the ones who are you know holding office hours and grading your assignments, running labs, and things like that. So um, your, the TAs are, are your best friends throughout this, this quarter. They will um, do whatever they can to uh, help you succeed. And so uh, it's uh, good to get on their, their good side. Uh, all right. So uh, before we actually get into what 107 is, I want to go, kind of, um, go over kind of briefly what the components of the course are. Mostly these are covered in the handout. So, you know, and also on the course website. So I don't want to go into too much detail over all of this stuff. Um, I just want to have this, you know, as kind of the, the uh, obligatory first day slides, as it were. Um, the first most important thing about uh, this section of the lecture today is to know about the 
CS107 website. It's displayed prominently on the handout and also at the top of this slide. Um, CS107.stanford.edu uh, will be the place to go for all things about this course. Uh, you know, make it your homepage. Like that's just that's where we're going to be posting announcements, assignments, uh, office hours, schedules, etc. Um, so, in particular, there's uh, all the details about our course policies, um, our you know grading and late policy and um, uh, the breakdown of course grades and all that stuff is is all there. That is the definitive reference for that information. Um, so rather than you know repeat it in five different places, we're just going to put it all on that website um, for you to find. Uh, so the, the so then um, obviously there is the uh, lecture component, which is uh, why you're all here. Uh, so lectures are we are we have a slightly unusual um, sort of lecture schedule I think compared to other classes that you might be used to. Um, we meet twice a week. We meet Monday and Friday, so there's there's no Wednesday lecture. And the idea here is to give you an opportunity um, to really kind of work with the material hands on during these lab sessions. And so we have labs running uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Instead, essentially, in place of a third lecture, um, we have we have these these one hour fifty minute uh, sessions with a TA and you know a couple dozen of your of your peers, um, where you actually get a chance to work with the material, you know, um, actually like try different things and and sort of uh, and explore concepts. I think much more deeply than if I just sat here and showed them to you on a screen for an hour and a half. Um, so a note about lecture, as, uh, as you certainly probably know, um, lectures are recorded this quarter. Um, and, uh, and so this, uh, of course, for our uh, friends out in SCPD land, that's, um, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's great for, for them. But it also means that for you, on campus students, um, it gives you an opportunity, this a, a pretty good opportunity to review the material that we've talked about to you know pause and rewind and take notes and all that. Of course, it does also create this potential opportunity to just uh, you know not show up. And let me let me just you know start off the quarter, right? We all want to start off the quarter right by saying, you know, what makes, I think, these lectures uh, you know, worthwhile and what makes them you know, interesting and engaging is for you to be here participating, asking questions. And I think that uh, far too often we see cases of students who think, oh, well, that's OK. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll miss this lecture, but I'll certainly catch up. Uh, before the next one, and then that doesn't quite work out. So then they'll say, well, gosh, you know, I'll catch up on the next one, and then the next one. And then before you know it, you have 18 lectures and the finals tomorrow. <laughs> and what do you even do? You can't even fit that into if you watch them all at 1.8 speed. So, uh, and I think especially for 107, with this lab structure, um, with the weekly labs, with the weekly programming assignments, um, it's it's, we, we're going to go pretty quickly. Um, and so I think it's, you know, it's a really good opportunity uh, if you come to lecture to just sort of make sure that you're keeping up with the pace that we are going at. And it's a good, it ensures that when you show up to lab, you'll have all of the, the background you'll need to really kind of dive into the, that week's lab material. Um, so please come to lecture. Um, it, you know, it, it's, it's, hopefully it's, uh, it's worthwhile to you. And if not, you should certainly let me know, um, you know, how to make it, make it more so. Um, a couple other points about sort of our course components. Um, we do have a required textbook. Uh, it's the full title and, you know, the information is in your handout. Uh, but I do want to mention about the, the textbook this quarter. So, uh, as of last quarter, we moved uh, the CS107 entirely moved to the third edition of the Brighton Holleran uh, Computer Systems book. 
And unlike, maybe, you know, you might be used to, oh, whatever, they, they just bump the addition number so they can charge us more money. Um, this one actually has a pretty substantial change. In particular, um, the, basically the whole kind of middle to late portion of the class will depend on the new material. We're, we moved to, um, you know, a 64-bit assembly language, which you'll learn about uh, certainly later. But, but I guess my point is, um, if you have friends or if you have an old copy of the, of the, of the textbook, uh, it's probably not going to work out quite as well as maybe it, it used to. Um, definitely try to get the third edition if at all possible. Um, so programming assignments, I'm sure uh, that's sort of par for the course as CS classes go. I do just want to make a note about um, exams. So we do have a midterm and a final. The dates are on the slide and in your handout. Um, please take note of them now, um, because with certainly with uh, nearly 400 students enrolled right now, there is really no way we're going to be able to um, provide any kind of alternate exams. So please make sure that you can make these times. The midterm uh, you should be able to make, because it's uh, going to be during our class time. And the final, likewise, because it's a registrar scheduled time. All right. Um, I guess one note that isn't on the slide is uh, if any of you have questions about sort of what the prerequisites are here and like what um, you know what we're kind of going in with. I I figure many of you uh, came from our CS 106s, came from uh, 106 you know B or X, um, so you have that kind of background. If so, then you're certainly in the right place. Um, this is definitely you know this is where we're counting on that material. Um, otherwise, you know uh, we're counting on a, a sort of uh, a reasonable understanding of a sort of a language like C++. So you know we're coming from one, so 106 B and X come from C++. So we're counting on some knowledge of a language like that. Um, maybe some exposure to some basic data structures, linked lists, uh, you know, recursive algorithms, uh, some algorithmic analysis kind of things. Um, we're not really gonna we're not really gonna hit like super hard on some of the conceptual stuff that happened in uh, 106B, but certainly the kind of programming skills that you built out, and uh, definitely the later part where you started you know, working with pointers and memory a little bit, um, that's all just gonna, this is just gonna keep happening. Uh, so you know, if you have any questions about whether this is the right class, if you, you know, weren't, didn't come from the 106s or you know, have some other programming background, uh, let us know, um, and we can try to help you out. <laughs> Yeah. Any questions about any of the sort of basic core stuff? Okay. Uh, so let's see. Before we get into uh, more of like kind of what we're doing here, um, I think you know I think now is a good opportunity to just kind of make a note about what what resources are available to you. Um, I'm sure I suppose some of you may have heard you know various stories about. CS 107, um, which we'll we'll try to get to uh, a little later, but um, you know we're gonna be we're gonna be working pretty hard this quarter. Um, certainly with the programming assignments, um, with the kind of pace that lectures and labs are going, um, I think one of the key the key things to really kind of make your experience in 107 successful is knowing when and how to ask for help, and so. Um, here I've listed a set of the kind of, you know, the resources you have available. We have the website. Um, we are using Piazza. We have a staff mailing list. We've got office hours. And certainly, you know, there are also 390 something uh, other of your classmates who are here and who are, you know, also working on the same material and struggling through the same concepts and the same bugs um, that, you know, you can certainly. Um, you should certainly take advantage of. So I think that, you know, I, I think we're going to work hard. Um, it, it, there's going to be there are going to be some some challenges. There's going to be some uh, some uh, some you know some struggles with some of the bugs and some of the the concepts. But we are all as core staff, and I think you know as a as a community of students and staff, you know, really trying to hope trying to get everyone through this class and feeling good about where they end up. And I think that 
the sort of stories from 107 sort of speak to the, the, the fact that, you know, by the end of this quarter, you're all just going to be really good programmers. And you're all going to be really, you're going to have a, sort of a, a content knowledge and a skill set that maybe now you probably don't even like know exists or would have believed um, you, know, you were going to get to. Um, so we're here to help um, to sort of get you through this class and um, get you feeling good about it. So if, if anything comes up that you know, isn't working, if you're needing, uh, if, you're, if you're struggling, certainly refer to these resources, refer to um, the, the website um, for more details about all these resources um, and let us know. Okay, uh, one more thing. I do have to get out of the way uh, before we get into all the super fun stuff um, is how not to get help. Um, so as some of you may know, the CS department has historically had some challenges with uh, honor code violations. Um, and I, for one, and I think many of, our, many of us agree that the, it's not so much that CS has any more uh, cheaters than any other department, but we have plagiarism <laughs> detector tools, and they work really well um, at finding instances where code is far too similar to be coincidental. And so I want to get this you know, out of the way early so that we're all on the same page that, like I said, we really do want you to succeed, and we really do want you to get the help that you need to, to feel good about this class to get your assignments done and to do well, but um, that solution needs to not include any of these not disallowed behaviors. We need you to be, the, the goal of this class and the whole, I think where a vast majority of the learning happens is when you sit down and write the programs and work out the bugs, um, you know, independently without consulting someone else's code or someone else's design. And so we have a very detailed collaboration page on the website that uh, I, that all of you should definitely read um, tonight or you know within the next uh, next week or so. Um, that outlines sort of. The, the points on this slide in more detail about you know, what you are allowed to do, what you're allowed to do um, while you know, with citations, and what you're absolutely not allowed to do. And please be aware of our policies. Be aware of that this is a, you know, it's a serious thing, and um, we don't want any of you to get stuck in it. I think for you know, like 90, 95, 95, 90% of you, this is just not going to be a problem, and I'm sorry that I even have to bring this up, but you know, it, it comes up every quarter, and so we definitely just want to get, get the word out that, so that we're all kind of on, on track. Yeah? All right, so uh, now, that, now that we've gotten all the, all the kind of uh, serious stuff out of the way, um, you know, I do want to take, a, take some time to just kind of go over what exactly we're, what it is we're doing here, right? Um, you know, uh, maybe some of you have heard some things about 107. Some of you may not have heard anything, or maybe you know, totally unfamiliar with what exactly we're trying to trying to do here. So, rather than um, you know me sitting up here and talking you through what CS 107 is and what we're trying to do, um, you know, I'm sure there. I think there's definitely been some. Uh, Many of you have probably heard some stuff, and so let's see if we can get you to kind of uh, chime in on that. So let's take a couple of minutes. Um, if you could just you know turn to the person next to you, and you're going to discuss a couple of things. Um, I want you to talk about um, with you know the person next to you one thing that you feel you're really excited about for this quarter. You're really excited about with with 107. Um, talk about one thing that you're maybe nervous about, or you're scared of, or worried about, and um, and you know maybe this will kind of go into it, but also one like myth or rumor that maybe you've heard about 107. Um, and you know we'll take a couple minutes, and then we'll try to regroup and sort of see if we can address some of those fears and you know 
talk up some of those, uh, some of the hopes, and uh, debunk any myths that might need to get debunked. All right, so yeah, take a few minutes. Um, What? Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's uh, regroup here. Let's uh, let's regroup and talk about some of the the things that uh, that you discussed. So let's start off. Um, and I guess we've got we've got Julie to uh, call on you here. So um, let's let's start with um, something that you're excited about. Um, anyone want to volunteer anything that you're super excited about this quarter? Coding without training wheels. Yeah, that's a that's that's absolutely where 107 is is all about sort of building out you know your programming skills, building out all this kind of you know the sort of um, I, I mean yeah <laughs> uh, yeah so sort of building out building out your kind of how to solve your own problems in a sense. I mean not entirely because of course we're always still here to help you and so are your peers and everyone else. But um, just kind of make you feel good about that. Cool. Else. There's got to be more than one. <laughs> <laughs> Binary bomb. Binary bomb. All right. Yes, it's a super fun assignment. Um, I guess I guess word gets around, and um, it yeah, it's a it's a really cool kind of like yeah. Uh, so briefly, it's an opportunity for you to look at a somewhat real kind of program, and you're doing a little bit of reverse engineering. So there's a little bit of kind of the the hacker feel to it, if, if you're, that appeals to you, um, but you know it's 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 a very different way of thinking about um, thinking about solving problems. We're not asking you to just you know write up a bunch of code. Um, we're asking you to 
take some code that's already been written and kind of figure out what's going on with it. Um, so, <coughs> good stuff. What else? What else is to be excited for? Way in the back. <laughs> Methodically debugging errors related to memory. Yeah, so debugging, debugging memory errors. Um, I'm glad you're excited about that. It's it's a really good it's a really good point. Um, I mean, so I, I think you know maybe we're going to start to see a couple of, of instances where maybe some of, some things that some of us are excited about are also kind of the things that some of us are are, are maybe a little worried about. Um, but you know, we'll definitely be spending a lot of time with memory and pointers in C, and C, uh, and 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 debugging is going to be a big part of that. But you know, I think you can feel pretty confident by the end of the quarter that, like, you will just be able to debug memory errors, right? You will just be able to, you know, you're not going to be able to spot them immediately. You're not, certainly not going to be able to, like, certain, like, I don't think any, any software developer, you know, no matter how much experience can debug by just, like, looking at code or anything. But you will know what the process is and you will know what it takes to, to solve these problems. And uh, you won't be, be guessing at it. So... So that's good. Be excited. It's a it's a good thing. Done with excited? Is it time for fear? All right. All right. Keep allocator. Keep allocator. Yeah. Um, this is like the most common common thing that comes up now. I think right uh, of of these. Um, heap allocator. Uh, your final assignment. It's certainly a uh, a, a rather. Um, a bit of a larger assignment than maybe you're used to. I don't actually know that it, it really is that much larger, though. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it, it can certainly. I think certainly now it'll seem pretty daunting, right? This idea that you're going to write this, in some sense, industrial strength program that uh, that that like will run really fast and also needs to work correctly in all of these different situations, um, but. You know, hopefully uh, you can feel somewhat assured that you know we're we're building you up to that, right? Um, we're we're hoping to get there by the end. And what hopefully you will find as you work when you get to working on Heap Allocator is that it really is kind of just an extension of a lot of the work that we've put in throughout the quarter, um, just kind of in this really cool project that I think you know you can walk away from 107. And I think we see this. Um, when students go out to you know, interview for jobs and things like that, and the, you know, an interviewer asks them, so what project did you work on that you actually feel pretty good about? I think a pretty significant number of students say, oh yeah, I, I wrote a heap allocator. And that's it's all, actually, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's a, so it'll be something that you will certainly feel proud about, um, we hope, by the end of the, the quarter. Um. <laughs> Um, assignments in general take a lot of time. Yeah, so the, the time commitment for assignments, I think, is, is certainly, um, I think that, I think CS kind of has this, this, this trend, right, where assignments tend to have kind of this high variance of time commitment. You probably saw this, you know, through the one of sixes. Um, partly, uh, you know, I think th that's why we're trying to get the message out about when and how to ask for help, which is that, like, certainly we're, you know, we're expecting the assignments to be challenging, and we're expecting you to work hard, and we're expecting you to, you know, run into some, some issues and some bugs and things like that. But if you're spending a really, you know, just a, an unreasonable amount of time on, on something, um, if you're, you know, staring at your code for hours and not finding a way, way out, um, you know, that might be a good time for you to look at one of the you know, what are the resources that I mentioned before and, and sort of see if there's a way for us, you know, either through the forum or office hours or something to help you get unstuck. Um, and, and so I certainly think the, the time commitment is, it's a thing, right? It's, it's certainly a thing. Um, but we're hoping to kind of, uh, to kind of, we're hoping for that time to be productive, right? We're hoping for, you know, by the end of it, it's like, yeah, I spent, you know, N hours on this assignment, but I feel like by the end of it, I actually really, really learned what it took to get there rather than, well, I kind of sat here and sort of changed some stuff and I eventually got there and I don't really know where the time went, but it, it went somewhere. Um, so, you know, if you're feeling like the time that you're spending on these assignments as you kind of move through is productive time, is time 
you know, spent towards, you know, really learning the material and really learning the concepts, then I think that's overall going to be a win. Cool. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so let me let me uh, <laughs> let me get let me get. Uh, oops. One sec. My computer went to sleep. There we go. All right. So let me uh, let me give you kind of my pitch then, um, since you know I think some of you have a, a sense of you know what's going on here. Um, so let me give you, you know, my my end of what, like my pitch for what 107 is, why I think it's it's awesome, and why it's uh, you know what we're hoping to get. Um, so I'll start with kind of um, so the the sort of trajectory for this discussion is going to be that I'll start with kind of these these course objectives. Um, I, I'll present them in terms of you know these are these are what in some sense. We want to be able to say, walking out of 107, here's what we want you to know. And then, you know, okay, you've got these, this list of objectives, but what do they actually mean? Um, I'm going to hopefully spend um, a sort of a, like, a more significant amount of time um, talking through, like, what does this actually mean in practice? Um, what are the kinds of things you're going to see um, as, in preparation for, for where we're going? Okay, so. So an overview of, of sort of some of the, the objectives here. We broke down the objectives. These are on the website also. Um, so just sort of that's, that's where I'm kind of basing this information. Um, we've got you know, three main categories of things that we want you to take away from 107 when you're done. Um, the, the first category is what we're calling mastery. And the idea here is we want you to really feel good about this stuff. We want you to be able to say you know, to, a prospective you know, interviewer for a job or you know, a faculty member if you're interested in research or some whatever, you know, in whatever sort of project that you're working on with a friend. We want you to be able to say that you really feel good about writing and debugging C code. And so this goes back to you know, the point we heard earlier where we had, um, you know, like we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with pointers. We're going to do a lot of stuff with memory. Um, we'll be thinking about, um, working at this this level of that's a little bit lower. So when we say lower level, we mean kind of moving toward the machine um, than what you're used to, maybe from the 106s, um, where you know we're really going to be looking at at how the memory is laid out, how it's um, how it's organized, and generally kind of writing code that not only acknowledges but really kind of takes advantage of. That understanding, um, and I think that's you know that's where the bulk of our assignments are going to be spent. That's where um, many of our labs are going to be. That's where a lot of our lectures are going to be. So you know we're going to keep hitting this over and over throughout the quarter. Is just working with C, working with memory, working with you know understanding how sort of as as a programmer we can uh, we can look at you know we can look at the system. Um, there's this other category, the, the middle category here, which we're calling competence. Um, this is this is stuff that you're going to see. Um, it's going to it's going to come up. There's going to be an assignment about it. It'll probably show up on an exam. You know, whatever. Like just kind of, but it's not going to be like the primary focus of the course. So we've got kind of a, a scattering of things in here. Each of these will probably last. You know, mostly like for example, um, working with assembly. Um, you know, that'll last a couple of weeks or you know three. Or Three weeks ish, um, and then things like um, thinking about computer arithmetic, thinking about performance. Um, generally, the sort of the broad space of what we're trying to do here is we're trying to tackle a set of skills which you know which we call computer systems. Um, I'll sort of, um, but the idea is that rather than working with a graphical interface. And an IDE where you know errors are nicely highlighted in, in your debugger, and you can kind of just like see everything kind of kind of happening. We're working with um, a layer that maybe feels a little bit like that's going to be that's sort of one step removed from that um, moving 
closer to the machine, um, sort of thinking about, uh, yeah, thinking about, <clears throat> thinking about issues that will come up um, when we're operating at that layer. And then finally, um, as more or less a sort of nod to the folks in EE, in a sense, um, as part of this, you will be exposed to sort of how the you know, actual hardware works um, and sort of that, you, you know, it's building out that kind of understanding of like when someone says, oh, Intel is releasing a new processor or thing, so you should wait before you buy a new MacBook or something. You know, what does that really mean? Like, are they actually doing anything or are they just, you know, finding more excuses to charge us more money? Well, like, you know, we're, we're going to try to get some, some basic understanding of like, what exactly does the processor do and, and why does that matter and how does that affect us as a programmer? Okay, well, anyway, so rather than dwell on sort of the topics, you know, um, let, me, let me kind of, so let me first talk to you about a couple of these sort of other, I, I wanna call these kind of other learning goals. These aren't really the, you know, the goals that are stated like in the syllabus, in the course description when you signed up and explore courses, but, you know, in the end, these are kind of the things that, that in some sense will sort of hopefully kind of naturally happen um, and, and sort of just to give you a sense for where we're going with, um, with, the, with the course. Um, overall, I think the, the kind of big, big punchline here is that we're, we're trying to build, so when you, when you explore like courses, if, if you were to look downstream at uh, systems courses. So I think now is a, a good opportunity for me to kind of position 107 relative to other courses in, in CS. Um, I think that, you know, I guess it didn't come out this time, but I think a common, I would say, misconception that comes out about CS 107 is that it, in some sense, sort of makes or breaks CS for the students in it. And I think this is a really narrow and kind of problematic view of what we're trying to do here. CS 107 is a systems course. It is the first of the, of the, of what we call the systems courses where, um, where systems again refers to understanding the machine, understanding, you know, how, uh, how to work with the machine, understanding the, the abstraction that uh, the hardware provides and how to work within and sometimes around that. Um, for some of you, and I think for, I think, you know, historical data suggests that for a, a statistically relevant percentage of you, um, systems will be the track that you end up in. And so for you, there's going to be kind of this, you know, a lot of the, the sort of those course objectives that we talked about on the previous slide are going to be relevant, right? Writing C code, working with assembly, understanding the architecture. These are things that you will want and need to know um, when heading into a class like operating systems or compilers. But for, I think, a much larger fraction of students here, um, you know, maybe, like, systems is just not going to be where you're going to end up. Um, maybe you'll end up in another track in CS, you know, AI, HCI, theory, graphics, whatever, uh, information, all those, you know, we've, we've got a, a broad range of sort of, there's a, there's, a, there's a broad range of material that's covered under computer science. And for some of you, you might not even end up in CS at all, um, you know, taking some of the skills that you learn from 106 and hopefully this class as well, you know, back to whatever department you are in or whatever sort of interests you're in um, that, you know, to sort of broaden the impact that computers can have overall. And so for you, you know, who aren't going to end up in systems, sort of like, I, I think 107 is kind of positioned a little differently. Like, in the end, the exposure to the systems concepts is going to be relevant. And hopefully uh, I'll show you kind of with a couple of examples a little later that there's, there are definitely situations where systems just kind of happens. And knowing how memory works, knowing how hardware works will, will play a role. 
But I think there's this other set of skills, um, sort of knowing how to ask questions of your computer, knowing how to explore sort of what your machine is doing, what your program is doing, knowing how to kind of, you know, assess like whether a bug is going to, you know, reliably occur or whether it's just going to, it's some kind of weird like coincidence or fluke. Um, and generally just kind of building out um, your programming, your programming knowledge. And, you know, I think a lot of what 107 is, is about building confidence and building just sort of, you know, like, how do you know when you can just say, oh, well, actually, I'm pretty sure I can, I can work around this problem. I'm pretty sure I, I, you know, I know what resources I need to look for um, to, get, to get help, to get information. And when do you, you know, when is it really worth it to just say, yeah, like, I've spent long enough on this. I need to go and ask someone who is more familiar with this material, who feels better about, you know, this particular thing that, you know, is it my expertise, um, but I can get some useful contributions from others about. So I think, you know, 107 is, is trying to build out these kind of broader skills. Um, it's, it represents kind of, you know, if you have to think of it as a, as a breadth class, as like, oh, okay, you know, been there, done that, and never again. Well, you know, uh, that's certainly... That, that, that will probably apply to, to some number of you, and that's fine. But hopefully you at least develop you know, some of these kind of these other, other skills, and hopefully you can walk away feeling good about, you know, feeling good that, you know, I want to keep going back to this message, I think, that by the end of 107, you're just going to be really good programmers. Um, and you're just going to feel really good about writing code. And that's not just in terms of C code. That's not just debugging memory. That's not just writing a heap allocator, because who the heck does that anyway? It's, it's, you know, I think it really kind of permeates through, you know, if you were to go and work on web development or Java or whatever for the rest of your life, um, you know, I, I think this, the skills are still going to be relevant. And, and sort of first and foremost in that is, is, is just programming. It's mileage. It's feeling good about it. Yeah? Any questions about... Anything so far? All right. So I'm just going to uh, jump right in then and sort of show you a few um, show you a few examples of of some of the some of the code that you will be working on and some of the the bugs. You know, so this is kind of the so I guess this is sort of the a continuation of the get excited part of the the, the lecture, right? It's like here's some stuff that. You're gonna sort of you're gonna see that will make sense, um, and I think you know another way that we've kind of positioned this this class and sort of where we'll see some of these examples um, come back is you know maybe during the during your your time in CS 106 A or B you were you know writing some code you ended up with some bug, you went to the layer and said hey I've got this crazy bug that like only shows up once every, you know, end times. I've got this bug that like only affects this really weird, crazy, crazy case. Or like, I thought I made this small code change that should have absolutely nothing to do with what is actually happening. And yet it somehow had this huge impact. What the heck is going on? And your section leader, you know, maybe said, oh, yeah, that happens. That's a thing. Don't worry about it. We're not going to talk about that right now, you know. Ask, ask later, right? Ask downstream where, you know, when, when you've had more kind of that of the knowledge. Sort of 107 is later, right? 107 is where we get to answer all of those questions. It's where we get to say, okay, so what was actually happening when your program crashed or when, um, you know, this problem happened? So, um, so the examples I'll show you now are, uh, are kind of characteristic of that. Oops. Did I? Okay. Cool. So, um, so I guess a note about sort of the the environment that we're working in. Um, we are going to be working um, pretty much entirely through the quarter in what we call a sort of a Unix environment in a command line environment. So, unlike you know, like it's the graphical interfaces and the IDEs that you're used to, we're going to be um, we're going to be typing commands at the command line. Um, and uh, so 
for I think the vast majority of you, this will look completely unfamiliar, um, and that's okay. That's 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 expected. Um, so for today, I'm going to show you some programs. I'm going to type some commands, run some stuff. Um, but if you know some of the commands go by and you're like, I have no idea what just happened. Like how you know how did you run that program? How did you build the? How did you you know build it? Um, how are you editing the files? Uh, we're not going to worry too much about that today. Um, we have so, we have a you know I'll, I'll mention it kind of near the end, but we've got a set of uh, sessions throughout this week and into sort of early next week where we'll we'll be trying to talk about um, we'll try to get you started and give you the commands that you need to know to get started on on the assignments and to start feeling good about. Um, working in this environment. So for now, you know, just kind of, I'll, I'll maybe point out a couple things of you know how I'm running things, how I'm how I'm interacting with uh, with the command line. But don't get too bogged down in the commands that I type or the you know any of the syntax for now. Okay. So let me start out um, by showing you this program. Uh, I'm going to pull it up uh, in a text editor. So in addition to so in addition to um, seems good. In addition to the uh, you know sort of the the command line interface for building and running programs, we're also going to be using a command line interface for editing programs. Um, and so here I've got this this program uh, which I've called num, and um, so I'm going to put this code up. And let's see, we've got some time. So uh, the the syntax here, you know, some of it will look maybe a little bit uh, unfamiliar, like maybe you're not used to seeing the kind of arguments being passed to main. But if you've seen some some C++ or even some Java, you know, while while loops should look familiar, ints, variables, kind of the usual things should look familiar. Um, you don't need to worry about what this sort of read int function does. Um, we'll explore that uh, later on. But here we've got, you know, a program which is essentially going to read a number. Uh, from sort of from the the terminal that you know it's going to ask the user to type in a number, and um, if it prints out if, if and then it'll go until basically the user enters a zero, and then we're going to square that number, right? So we're just going to use the normal uh, operator that you've seen before. And we're going to multiply number by itself, store it back in a variable, and then this syntax, you know, uh, if you're used to like C out from uh, CS 106 B or X. Um, this is basically the equivalent. You know, it's just going to print out, uh, you know, blank squared equals blank um, is is how we're going to read this this print statement. Okay, but I want to show you the code just to you know let you see this line in particular. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm not doing anything magical here. I'm just taking a number, multiplying it by itself. Yeah. So let's run this program and try it on a few numbers. Um, you know, maybe this seems a little underwhelming. I'll put five, and it says, "Hey, guess what? Five squared is twenty-five." And hopefully, you feel pretty good about that. And you put in seven, and you get seven squared is forty-nine. You put in a hundred, you get a hundred squared is ten thousand. And you're like, "Yeah, whatever. Okay, you know, we learned this in one hundred six A, right? Like, uh, that's cool. That's fine. Okay, we put in a thousand. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of bored now, right? Like, I don't know, twenty thousand. Wow. Like, what are you even doing, dude? Like, <laughs> huh?" Okay, so you know we kind of kept going, and somehow we ended up at this place where we asked for fifty thousand squared, and we got a negative number. That's kind of weird, right? Like math, ma like you know, for the mathematicians in the audience, this is this is essentially unacceptable, right? Like <laughs> you don't take a number and square it and get a negative. And you might say, okay, wait, so this is this is a classic kind of thing where. You're like, oh, you know, maybe maybe this, you know, this might have happened in 106 if you were doing, I don't know, like some hailstone sequence or something weird like that. If you punched in some crazy large number, um, and, and you know something crazy happened, you got some negative number or whatever, and your section leader said, yeah, don't worry about it. It's a thing. That's a thing that happens. You'll learn about it later. And what we're going to try to do here is we're really going to, you know, not absolutely right now, but. Throughout the corner, we're going to try to figure out what exactly happened here. Why did it come out negative? And here's the other cool one. 
if I put in 100,000, yeah. uh, it goes back to positive. Except that's not the right answer, right? You don't take one and a bunch of zeros, multiply it by one and a bunch of zeros, and get stuff that ends with a, an, an eight. You know, like how does that happen, right? Um, so there's definitely something going on, and this isn't a matter of, you know, uh, there, you'll, you'll notice actually that this isn't random. The number actually always comes out the same if I put in the same number. So there's definitely something very specific happening behind the scenes, and, and what that is is what we're going to try to understand. Um, let me, let me see. Um, okay, let me show you another example. This one's maybe a little bit more involved, so I'm gonna get you involved in, in looking at it. Let me, uh, I can't open tab easily, so that's fine. Let me pull this up. Uh, so here's a different example. Um, this one is, it's gonna use the same read int function, so you saw kind of that already. Um, I'll save the punchlines. Well, okay, whatever. That's, yeah. So here's a function. Uh, what we're basically gonna do is we're going to sum up, okay, so the bottom part, the, the, the main portion here, um, you know, is sort of your, what we saw kind of before, where we're gonna read in a number, and what we're gonna, and we're gonna pass it to this function. Um, so focus on the sum ints function. It's gonna take an argument, that is a count, um, and we're basically gonna try to add up the numbers from one to count. So if I pass in four, it's gonna add one plus two plus three plus four. If I pass in five, it's gonna add one plus two plus three plus four plus five. But rather than just adding them up like a normal simple program, we're gonna do it in this kind of wacky way where we've got this array, um, so this is the syntax. Um, I think you sh maybe have seen this in C++ before. This is the syntax for declaring an array of integers um, we're gonna go through um, from zero uh, up to, but not including, count, and we're gonna fill this array with the numbers. So we're gonna fill it with one, two, three, four, and so on. And then we're gonna go back through the array and we're gonna add them up. So it's like, why, why bother, right? What, what's the point? But okay, kind of bear with me for a second. Um, you know, there's something interesting happening here. And you'll notice that the array has been declared to have only five elements in it, right? So my question for you is, okay, well, first of all, I, let me show you, uh, let me show you that this works for numbers one through four, just so that we're not kind of trying to find bugs that don't exist. So I do two, you can see that the sum from one to two is three, right? So one plus two is three, if I put in four, we get that one to four is 10, that makes sense. Right? One plus two plus three plus four. Put in five, we get 15. My question for you is, oops, hi, can I? Oh, I didn't put a break. How unfortunate. All right, well, that's okay. Uh, I forgot to break the, the while loop. I should have tested this more. Um, well, there you go. That's, that's why testing is important. Um, but, uh, my question for you is, okay, so let's say I put in a number that's larger than five. What's gonna happen? So, uh, you know, maybe take a, take a minute, you know, talk, to, talk, to, uh, talk to a neighbor if you want. Make a prediction. What's gonna happen? Like, how big can I make this number? Is it gonna work? Is it gonna crash? You know, it's okay if you just totally get it wrong. Just, just take a guess.
we pass in a number that's bigger than five. Just go and shout it out. Garbage. What? Garbage? What do you mean by that? You're going to try to access memory out of past the balance of the array. Yep. You should be no idea what it is. Uh -huh. You're going to get what you're going to get. So what do you think is, gonna, is the program going to work? Or is it going to... I think it'll work. Yeah, it'll probably work. Maybe it'll work. Okay, okay, so like, maybe it'll print something weird. Like, so is it going to... So, I mean, I guess, like, all right. Any, any other kind of sort of anything else kind of weird coming up? Yeah, um, it's probably going to start overwriting some first based on the um, based on how they're allocated because some is allocated right after none. Oh, okay. So, so it's probably you're, indexed you're, right afterwards, and so you'll probably not get the right answer ever if the number of integers is over five. Interesting. Okay, so your guess is that sum is also going to be some variable that has some some space set aside for it. And so if we you know kind of keep walking, then maybe sum will get overwritten. At which point we're definitely not going to get the right answer. Um, that's interesting. Okay. Anything else? Anyone want to? Maybe this is a, too much of a gimme. Anyone want to guess that it's going to like I don't know throw an exception? Or, you know, array index out of bounds exception at line 17 of mem.c. Are we all kind of you know inured to that? I don't know what the line number is. Sorry, but are we all kind of we're we're all kind of expecting you know, we're all kind of expecting some kind of disaster whether it works or not. Um, yeah, so there's there's no exception. Uh, sorry, um, you know maybe in 106b I think we even we work really hard to get them, but uh, okay so let's just try it. All right, so let's do mem. I don't know. Okay, so under six. Well, that actually worked. <laughs> well, that's that's weird. Wow. Like okay, so. Uh, okay. Well, that's that's kind of awkward. You know, maybe the compiler's doing something. Okay, let's try seven. Huh. Oh wow, okay. Uh, this is really weird, right? Like, ah, uh, okay, there we go. Wow, that actually, that happened earlier than I expected, actually. I, wanna, I, I actually want to get back to that. Um, yeah, so it was kind of weird, wasn't it? Like, it was totally working uh, up through eight, um, like, with no signs of a problem whatsoever. And then when we got to nine, something happened. And the machine said no. And the way that the machine says no is it prints out this message, segmentation fault core dumped. Now, so if you were hoping for something like an array index out of bounds exception, if you were hoping for something like an error message showing up saying, hey, my gosh, you sure did go out of bounds with that array. Um, would you like, you know, would you like me to tell you what line that happened on and what iteration of your for loop and what you were about to do? Um, yeah, that didn't happen. We just get this nice little message that just says, all right, that's it. <laughs> and, um, and, and so the, so first of all, an interesting point actually that um, that's that sort of not uh, super relevant, but was actually I wasn't actually expecting it to crash at nine. I was actually expecting it to crash later because when I built this program on my local computer this morning, it actually crashed at eleven. So that's kind of weird. Like it actually worked at, from nine and, and ten, and then it crashed at eleven. Um, so anyway, so that just gives you a sense for like you know now we're kind of in this weird space of like we're doing something. It's not legit. It's not good. And the, you know, so I guess I didn't actually show you how to compile, show you compilation, but I'll, I'll show it to you briefly. So um, if I do a, if I type make, which is how we're going to be compiling these programs, um, we're, we're using a, a compiler called GCC. Um, and you'll notice, you know, the keys here are we did not get any warnings, we didn't get any errors, we didn't get any kind of indication from sort of this build process that said, hey, gosh, you're not allowed to do that. Um, and not only that, but sort of, you know, for the first couple of instances through eight, we were allowed to just keep on going. The language didn't stop us. There was no, there was no sort of language support. And what ultimately did it, which we will explore in, in great detail uh, throughout the quarter, is it was actually the operating system that got in our way. The, the segmentation fault is the operating system's way of saying, you know, like whatever the heck your language was doing, whatever the heck your program was trying to achieve, like you've actually messed up something that is so 
that just doesn't make sense. I cannot interpret what you are asking me to do anymore. And therefore, the only thing I know how to do is stop your program. So uh, we, will, we will revisit segmentation faults throughout the quarter. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, like, I, I like to say that sort of by the end of 107, I think you kind of, I think a lot of students are kind of happy when they see a segmentation fault. Because what it, what it means is that the program has actually done something so obviously wrong that they actually got a response. And what that means <laughs> is that they can, what that means is that they can go in and what we'll see is we can get, we can go in with a debugger, we can go in with some really good tools and they will tell us that information that maybe you got used to from the Java exception. Oh, it's on this line of this file and here's what the value of num was and here's what the value of count was. And you get all of that information. And what's in some sense a lot worse and, and a lot more reason to understand systems is how to deal with these. What do we do when we type in a number and suddenly the right answer comes out, yet we just know the program can't possibly be working? How do, how do we deal with that then? And so we're going to explore kind of all of that. Um, any, any questions about this? Maybe I'll, I'll sort of preempt that there was a, you know, one of the, one of, one of you pointed out that, well, maybe some was sort of, would be allocated kind of next to this, uh, this array and therefore would cause uh, the program to just sort of print out a wrong answer but not crash. Um, that, as we'll see, kind of depends a lot on the compilation, depends a lot on the system. And so there's, there was no guarantee for that. And in this case, as it turns out, some was just somewhere else. And so it didn't get involved. But then something else got involved, and then we crashed. Yeah? Oops, that is the website that I thought I was going to show and decided not to. All right. So, whoops. Whoa, it reset. Oh, how unfortunate. Uh, okay, let me go back. I did not expect it to reset. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, so here we go. All right, so I've shown you a couple of examples. There are certainly going to be, there are certainly more examples throughout the quarter for, you know, like all the kind of the things that, that, that are going to come up. But really, like, you know, maybe you're thinking now, like, okay, okay, Michael, like, whatever. You know, you made those programs. Like, you made them, you even made them fit on a screen. Like, who are you kidding, right? Like, these aren't, these aren't, you know, these aren't real problems, right? Like, so sure, I could see that, like, as a, as a C programmer, as someone who's going to be working in compilers and operating systems as, as, you know, as a hacker or whatever, like, maybe this matters to me. But why does this matter otherwise? Why would this matter if, all I really wanted to do was work in Java with those nice array index out of bounds exceptions. So um, I've got a couple of sort of relevant stories to show you sort of systems happening in the real world. My point being that like, you know, I, so I think there's a, there are a couple ways to approach it. Um, and the, the first that I will, I, will, I will take is that it is actually somewhat surprising when these kinds of systems concepts happen and when, the bugs, the very bugs that I showed you actually come into play. So uh, I'll start with this example. Um, this is, so the, the slides will be on the website and you can click that link to sort of read the full article on it. But essentially, so this happened back in May of uh, last year, 2015. Um, Boeing had their 787 uh, sort of Dreamliner, whatever the heck that means, whatever. Big airplane, fine, cool, cool story. Um, but uh, they discovered this this bug that they had in their software, which is that when you left the plane on for more than eight months without turning it off, you know, um, the power would just go out. And like, so, you know, the good news is this was discovered in a lab. Nobody got hurt or anything like that. It was a totally, you know, they, they, were, they were doing their sort of due diligence in testing um, in testing the plane, there was actually a kind of a funny comment on the article that was like, how the heck did somebody think to leave the plane on for eight months? Like, why is that something you would even think to do? But like, 
that's what you do is, is you, know, you, you, you test, right? And you test thoroughly and, and you, you try to account for cases like this. But at the end of the day, what they basically found out, and you can read more about it in the article, is that, hey, just like the example that we saw, when, you, when they had this sort of counter that was sort of counting up, keeping track of how long the plane was on, maybe to keep you know, everything synchronized, I'm not exactly sure what it was there for, but you know, we use counters all the time. At some point, it goes negative. And when it goes negative, everything kind of goes crazy. Like if you think about the case, if you think about our, our square example, right? if we were expecting the square of that number to be positive, suddenly we're not getting that anymore. And that you could imagine at kind of a larger scale could actually lead to some pretty big, um, pretty big problems. So basically the program I showed you, the first program, um, you know, affecting you know, good programmers working on a real world system. And then the other example that I want to show you is, um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll save the I'll save the punchline, but um, I'll, so I'll, I'll move later. But um, which is is basically the second example that I showed you uh, that I, I showed you with the array. And what this was, this was discovered actually three months ago. Um, it was kind of a, a fun little fun little news story, um, which was that on on some number of Linux machines, um, when the bootloader asked you for a username and password so that you could get into the machine. If instead of typing your username and password, you hit backspace 28 times and hit enter, you just got it. <laughs> so, like, okay, so basically, yeah, so the premise is, right, so you, so you, you know, just, you can just kind of imagine this. I really wanted to actually, like, do a demo of this, but uh, it's too much work. To, they, they did fix it, so it would be kind of hard to, to go back. But, yeah, so if you imagine, you know, you're asking for a username and password, I walk up to the thing, hit backspace a bunch of times, hit enter, oh, look, I have access to your machine. I can basically do anything I want. Um, we can get all the files, all that stuff. Um, so how the heck did that happen, right? Well, uh, it basically happened uh, because of that out of bounds error that we saw, where you know you can imagine they had this kind of this space set aside for entering your username, and through some combination of things, um, you they they kind of went off the end, the language didn't tell them anything, the sort of like the, the hardware didn't stop them, and suddenly like boom, you're, whoops, my mic just went down. And suddenly, um, you know, it's all over. Uh, and, and the attacker gains access. So, um, you know, kind of an interesting story. Um, I bring up this story for actually a, a variety of different reasons. Um, for one, it's so you know I, I think security is really cool. Um, I think it's certainly very topical. We've heard some news stories um, recently about some security stuff. You know, um, I think a lot of people are starting to think about it. Um, but a, a couple of other reasons that I think this uh, this story is really neat. Um, the link that I have here is not actually a link to a newspaper article or any kind of like media source. This is a link to the so the this this. Vulnerability was discovered by a couple of researchers at the University of Valencia in Spain, and one of them, the sort of the, I think the main person who kind of who found the problem, wrote this very detailed explanation of how this problem happened and how, you know, how they were able to take advantage of this bug that you saw, you know, the, like this very similar to the one that you saw with the array, how they were able to take advantage of that and turn that into something that they could actually used to take control of your of a machine. And so if you were to go to this link today and try to read over it, you probably would you'd be able to make some sense of it. Some of it would be kind of, you know, would, would make some sense, but mostly it'll probably look a little, you know, you just won't have heard some of the terms. You won't know, you know, when they're talking about um, the stack and how the stack is laid out and assembly and things like that, you won't be able to follow along right now. But I think like seven weeks from now, once we've covered that material, we will basically be covering the very material that is, you know, that is used in this article. So by the end of this class, 
you can go to that link and you can totally understand this vulnerability. You can totally understand how they did it, what techniques they used, um, and like how that problem happened. And I just think that's a really cool kind of like, you know, like we're not just sitting here kind of teaching you this just so that you can do well in this class or the next class. Like people are using these techniques and people are, you know, even in this kind of modern era of web development and uh, and sort of high level languages and fast machines, this kind of material is still really relevant and is still kind of, you know, being, uh, being actively used um, for these problems to, to sort of solve these problems. Um, and I guess there's kind of this sort of third uh, point that I kind of want to make, which is that actually I think for both of these stories, but especially the second one, um, I think it's fair to say the media kind of overreacted a little bit. I think, uh, you know, people saw security and like just, you know, the, the vision of somebody walking up to your computer and just like getting access by hitting backspace is just kind of like, you know, it's certainly one to kind of draw your attention, like no matter what your experience level is. Um, so I think it, it certainly caught a lot of people's attention. Um, but there's sort of this aspect that is, there's sort of this aspect of understanding the system and understanding, you know, what we're trying to do here that like, I think you, you know, you can walk away from this class feeling better about sort of assessing whether some of these situations are what they're being made out to be. And so, you know, as needed, you can, you know, explain to your, your friend who's, who didn't take this class, you know, why encryption matters or why, you know, um, well, you know, whatever, or like why the, the hardware you know, why it's not possible to, to break into the, the hardware or whatever, you know, like, okay, we're not, like, like I said, I'm focusing a lot on security because I think they're very topical, but I think that you'll be able to feel good about, like, just sort of how the system works in a way that you can read some of these articles and say, you know what, like, I think you're kind of making that up, and I think maybe there's, there's or on the contrary, you can look at a, a case that maybe some people are kind of, are kind of overlooking as like, oh yeah, you know, that was just a coincidence and say, no, no, like, I think there's actually something here. Um, so I, I think just sort of that, just sort of having that perspective um, about sort of current events, about what is happening in computing, I think is, is, really, is really relevant. Um, so I focused, I focused a lot on, on uh, bugs, on vulnerabilities, partly because I think they're kind of you know, they, they sort of catch our attention. They, they make the news a lot. But I think, it's, I think it's fair to say that systems is a pretty broad sort of, you know, it has broad applications. And so, again, to those of you who, are, who aren't really thinking of going into systems, who are thinking of, you know, staying at the higher levels, I think there's kind of, there's still this appeal to, um, I, I think inevitably, whether it be on a, on a personal project or in a, in a job or in a research project, you will, I think, inevitably run into situations where this kind of material comes up, whether that be, you know, thinking about like how, how Google uses their thousands, I'm sure, of servers um, and like the kind of, you know, sort of the implications of, of memory and that kind of thing, or um, whether that be, um, you know, thinking about, um, thinking about like websites running faster or slower. I think, you know, there's the example of Facebook rewriting a lot of their, their backend web stuff in C or C++ because it was just running too slowly. And, you know, so being able to think about performance, being able to think about the hardware, being able to think about, you know, the, the, the specific details of implementation, um, like, yeah, right, it'll, it'll come up. Okay, any, any questions about any of that? What about this? Okay, so let me end with a, a quick sort of to-do list for what we need from you um, over the, the, next, uh, the next week or so. So um, I talked a little bit about the, the weekly labs, so just sort of uh, a kind of going back to that. Um, this week we will, not have a, we will not have a lab, but we will need you to sign up for your regular lab time. So starting on Wednesday at 10 a.m. on the website, there will be a link for you to go and sign up. Uh, Sign-ups are first come, first serve. So if your uh, schedule is particularly constrained, um, definitely check that out earlier rather than later. Um, this week, instead of a lab, we will have 
these Unix help sessions to uh, sort of help you get started with the environment, um, with you know running programs, you know uh, like editing files and things like that. These are technically optional, so if you're like if you already have Unix experience, say from a, a, an internship or from like a research project, then that's fine. But I think for the vast majority of you, um, it is totally expected that this material will be very unfamiliar. And so that's why we've got these uh, offered throughout the week. Um, they're all held in the Gates basement. So um, check out the schedule for that. Um, a reminder about readings for Friday's lecture, um, you know, to help you kind of keep up with that. And then we will have a, an assignment posted. You should certainly check out the assignment if you, you know, before, uh, if you can before the Unix help session, but probably you'll need the Unix help session before you can really get started. So don't worry if you read over it and you're like, I have no idea what to do. Um, that's kind of what the, the help session is there for. All right, so uh, we will, uh, other than, so we'll see you, the, your, the TAs will see you at the Unix help sessions this week. SCPD students, wait for an email from us. And otherwise, I will see you again on Friday.